Lolo. Uh, it has been requested that I do a more thorough video of my character creation process because I did blow through it pretty fast the first time. So if you already know what's up, then you can go ahead and skip to the next one where we actually game and uh, otherwise hang around and this was a special request. You're welcome. The key to a well-balanced party is to have one of each of the different types. Now, of course, you can spec out if you want to and have, you know, four mages or four thieves if you want. And go ahead, you'll have a ball. But there are certain things that you're not going to be able to do. And it doesn't really behoove you to spec out quite that much. So the first thing you'll need is a meat shield. Basically someone to stand in the front and do some damage and take most of the hits. So for that, the best choice is a fighter or a paladin, and there are a couple really big differences between the two. Um, let's start with a fighter. The first thing is that a fighter can be any of the alignments, and the alignment is just, you know, how the character acts in most situations. So. Um, if you're a lawful good, then you always do acts of good and you follow the letter of the law at all times, regardless of whether it's convenient or not. Whereas if you're you know, a chaotic neutral, you do whatever is good for you, regardless of the consequences, you don't lead good or bad. So, um, whereas the paladin can only be lawful good because they are champions of Paylor, the god of justice and represented by the sun. So just find the thingy. There you are. The other big thing is that you'll notice that we can't decrease this and that's because paladins kind of have a reputation for being charismatic. Um, I think 17 is a little high. Uh, it's definitely higher than you know any of my campaigns. Normally 14 or 15 is good enough. Um, and the other thing about paladins is that later on they can do a very simple healing spell called Lay on Hands. Um, it's usually, you know, a one or two shot, but, you know, it, it can definitely make the difference if, you know, that's the one alive, especially because your meat shield usually lasts longer than, you know, a mage in the front line. Um, so the two main stats for your meat shield is constitution, so that they can take hits, and strength, so they can dish out. Um, the really good thing about fighters and paladins, and these are the only two classes that can do this, is they can spec out their strength. I mean, 18 is usually the highest that it can go without racial modifiers, which I'll get to in a second. But they can spec out their strength so that it can actually be higher than 18. And this sort of amplifies this, so this 2 is actually going to make it a little bit more than 20 in, um, for certain checks. Good. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to remap my keys to name it properly. I'm not keeping these people. Um, so I will make him a gnome so I can show you the racial modifiers and show you exactly why a gnome cleric is a horrible idea. Uh, let me see, who looks like a gnome? Gnome, gnome, you. You look like a gnome. A hairy gnome. Uh, so, uh, racial modifiers are a specific advantage and disadvantage for each race. Now, humans don't have racial modifiers, they're neutral, and I think that that was a bias on the part of the creators of D&D, because they were humans, so they wanted the ability to do anything. But, uh, the racial modifiers for gnomes is a minus one to wisdom, see? And that's an issue because the most important stat for a cleric is wisdom. It's what allows them to do healing spells. And so if you don't have an 18, especially in this game, you're not going to be able to get the really important spells like neutralize poison, you know, when you're actually going to need them. Um, and the plus is intelligence. So that is why gnomes make excellent mages. So we have a meat shield, and we have a healer, and the two others are always highly debated. Um, you can have a thief or a ranger. Definitely you should have some sort of magic user, which I'll get into, you know, the good reasons for that later. But if I had the ability, I would have a ranger thief. And actually, ranger thief is a natural combination. So it's kind of frustrating that that's not an option, and it's not an option for any of the races. So don't think that I'm just, you know, being specialized here. Uh, so I'm just going to stick with Ranger because that's what she was originally. Um, 
And rangers are excellent because they um, they have high perception, and to have high perception, you need high wisdom. But um, they're excellent because um, high perception is all of your spot checks, listen checks, anything that allows you to perceive of anything outside of the normal scope. So it allows you to find hidden passageways or secret buttons, and it's not really going to be much use, you know, in the dungeon in the first game, but in the second game it introduced flavor text, and so that will become increasingly important in the second game. Rangers are also great because they can dual wield, and that's not usually something that a class outside of the meat shields can do. Um, of course they have a penalty, but not in this game for some reason. Now, half-elves are kind of my favorite race because um, you get a little bit of the bonus from having elven blood, so you have a little bit of their low-light vision, a little bit of their advanced hearing, but you don't have the constitution issues that elves have. See, elves have minus one constitution, and also in some games and campaigns there is a ban on their resurrection because of their low constitution. And this is going to happen in the second game, which is why both of my characters in the back row are half-elves And when I would usually make my mage uh, a full-blood elf. They really are a stickler about it in the second game. You cannot resurrect an elf, and even in an actual campaign, it is extremely difficult. You have to jump through a bunch of hoops if you're even able to at all, and some worlds don't have um, temples that can do that. So, I just don't risk it. <laughs> So, a half-elf is definitely the way to go. Um, Alright, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. I am extremely biased towards mages. Um, I normally play a mage first thing in any game to get a feel for it. Um, and whereas you need wisdom for cleric spells, you need intelligence for... You need intelligence for mage spells. <laughs> So, um, that's really the only stat that's going to do them any good. For a mage, the next best thing I give them is dexterity, because by some odd chance you have to have them in the front line, a higher dexterity will increase the chance of them dodging a blow, which is super crucial since they usually have, like, zero constitution and, you know, zero hit points, basically. Um, and you will notice that as I improve the dexterity, the armor class goes down, and that's something that is really kind of weird about the D&D system, is that the lower the number you have, the better your armor class is. So, um, 10 is pretty standard, that's what you start out with, you know, if you have an average stat in dexterity and you don't have any armor or shield that incre increases your armor class. But dexterity adds... Um, or subtracts, rather, a point from your armor class, you know, at the higher levels, which is excellent. So an armor class of six is absolutely amazing, especially for a mage, because mages cannot wear any sort of heavy armor. That's something I forgot to mention. Clerics um, can't use any bladed weapon. It's kind of against their religion. So they use maces or morning stars, but no swords or daggers. So, that's pretty much the only thing that are going to help her. I mean, you could make her ridiculously strong and stuff, but that doesn't really fit with a mage. I mean, uh, maybe if you're like a spellblade or something, but that's completely different, of course. So that was my character creation. I have a nice rounded party. Feel free to ask me any other questions. These characters have been with me for a really long time, but I don't want to bore you with all of their backstory. So, yeah. See you next time we actually game. <laughs>